All right, my name is William Bowles. I want to thank everybody for coming on the Zoom tonight. We have a special guest, Byron. He has a story to tell everybody about his amazing experience with this iTera Care device. Before I get started, before we start the, the Zoom here, uh, there are no medical claims made about this device because it is not a medical device. So it does not cure, mitigate any disease. It is uh, a physiotherapy device. And uh, again, it is not a medical device and we make no claims about it being a medical device or being able to cure anything. So I wanna give this over to Byron and Byron John, uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, you've got an amazing story and I'm so thankful that you and your wife decided to share that with the iTeraCare Pripe International world. And uh, please tell us what happened. And I just wanna make a one disclaimer here though, if you're squeamish in any way, uh, the photos that you're about to see are very graphic. And I think it's necessary to show what this man has been through to see these. He's done a great job putting that together here tonight. So Byron, uh, we'll go ahead and let you take over. Thank you again for coming on. Okay, <clears throat> everyone can hear me just fine, right? Yes. Okay, well, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, tell you all about my my story of my leg and its recovery. Um, let me just say from the onset, I don't think that I've got a market on suffering. Everybody's got a story, but uh, I think I've got a pretty good story myself. So just a little bit of background. I'm 68 years old. And for the most part, I've been a very healthy person all my life. I've enjoyed being outside. I enjoy sports and I've had a really nice quality of life. Uh, but on October 6th, 2021, so that's almost eight, eight months ago, uh, everything kind of changed and, and came to a halt. So here we go with the graphic pictures. So on that day, I was up on a roof of a gazebo, <clears throat> measuring it to, uh, for some metal roofing to put on it. And uh, long story short, I fell off of that roof and landed on some scaffolding, <clears throat> hit the pole, the end pole of that scaffolding and it just kind of peeled my, my shin right back. And uh, yeah, it was kind of scary. So you can see that's bone right there and this is muscle and and you if you're knowing, uh, body anatomy, you can see a lot of stuff going on right there. Uh, while I was in the uh, hospital getting stitched up, the doctor told me, <clears throat> you know, shins are terrible to heal. They're notoriously slow healers because you have poor blood circulation to that part of your body. And that gash was uh, nine and a half inches long and uh, took 25 stitches to stitch it up. I was kind of na naive of the situation. My body's always been a good healer. <clears throat> and I thought, you know what? In about a month, I think I'll be just fine and fine and be going about my normal activities again. And uh, boy, was I wrong. So one month turned into two, two turned into three. And now, like I say, I'm going on eight months <clears throat> and probably still have a little bit of healing still to go. So one of the problems with my leg is, you know, like I mentioned, that part of your body just gets very poor blood circulation. And I got a lot of frequent infections, had four different infections. Uh, I did some calculating and I figured that altogether, I was on antibiotics for 83 days. That's a long time to be on antibiotics, including my last infection was a staph infection. I was on for 35 days, uh, three times a day getting uh, intravenous IV infusions with a PICC line uh, to my heart. Also during that uh, eight months, I've been on painkillers almost the entire time. That's the only way that I've been able to uh, deal with the pain and especially sleep at night.
So after five weeks, <clears throat> they consider a wound. If it hasn't healed up by then, uh, it's considered a chronic wound. And uh, that was certainly my case. Let's see, I think I skipped one slide, I did. Uh, what I wanted to show you here is after five weeks, all, all my skin was dying around the wound and it started to uh, smell. <clears throat> I told my wife, gosh, I can hardly stand to be around myself. It's, it's starting to stink. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was in trouble when my leg turned gray and all of this started going black. So after those five weeks, I started <clears throat> going to a wound center at a hospital. I had weekly visits and I went to those every single week for 21 weeks. Uh, just to let you know a little bit of the cost of that, <clears throat> I was charged $544 every single visit. And then if they did something special to it, like a skin graft or uh, maybe a little bit of surgery on it. Uh, that was an extra, extra charge. So very expensive. Uh, what they typically do with a wound like this at a wound center is first thing they had to do was tear off those scabs. So after five weeks, scabs are a detriment and they actually seal in the um, infection and don't let your skin close up. So the first thing they're going to do is the doctor just kind of got his thumb and his thumbnail and just kind of pried up underneath those scabs and tore them off. And yes, it, it, it hurt, it hurt. And then also as part of the weekly infections is <clears throat> you have a lot of dead skin. That's what you see here on the yellow parts. So he'll get a little scalpel and he'll cut off all that dead skin. And then of course that leaves it real gruesome looking and bloody. So they do some chemical carterizations and that's what this gray bubbly area is. You might be wondering what the purple is. <clears throat> uh, of course, this is all covered with a bandage. Uh, a wound to heal its best should be moist, but not wet and not dry either. As it gets too moist, it tends to destroy the edges. See that little bit of white right there? It tends to destroy the edges of your skin. And so this purple uh, is a protection so that the wetness of the wound doesn't weep out and destroy this outer perimeter. So I did that for six and a half months. It uh, wasn't too much fun. At six and a half months, I thought I was just about over the hill and my wound was probably within two weeks of healing up. And for some crazy unknown reason, uh, on the side of my calf, uh, it started boiling up almost like a boil, looked like it was going to erupt. And within days I had full blown infection and it developed into what they call cellulitis which does all sorts of tissue damage and my uh, you can see how red my leg is <clears throat> it was beet red really from my toes all the way to my crotch you see these markings on here <clears throat> so every day they would kind of mark the leading edge of the infection you know, and it just kept creeping up and up and up. And as it got up towards my uh, crotch, I was getting a little bit worried there. Uh, <clears throat> you might wonder about the color. The truth is <clears throat> in photographs, it never looks as red as it really is. <clears throat> so you might think, gosh, I'm exaggerating the redness of it. <clears throat> Believe me, it was way, way more red and it shows up on these uh, photographs. Uh, so these were in intensive care. I was in intensive care for a full week and uh, <clears throat> on IV infusions the entire time. And I was so sick during that period and didn't take any pictures. <clears throat> I just didn't care about anything other than trying to survive. 
And uh, I was very close to losing my leg. One night they brought in two orthopedic surgeons and they were starting to talk about surgery and what to do about this. And uh, yeah, I was, I was worried. So this is probably a week out of intensive care and part of the infection is starting to go. You can see my, my ankle and the upper part, the infection is starting to leave. But this area around the wound <clears throat> just never, never would clear up. It just uh, stayed red and looked angry and not good. So five weeks after intensive care, I went to my uh, infectious disease doctor for my five week checkup. And uh, <clears throat> this is what it looked like. It was red, it was swollen. This doesn't look like much right here, but that's kind of where the infection originated. And I mentioned that idea that there was an area that was kind of uh, boiled up and looks like it looked like it was going to erupt. That's the spot. So that area is kind of spongy around it. Uh, some things I didn't expect is my legs swelled up to twice its size and all of my skin fell off repeatedly. I think I've probably gone through five layers of skin now. Seems like as soon as I get a new uh, epidermis, you know, it peels right off again. And that's from the heat and, and inflammation. So anyway, the doctor looked at this and he said, you know what? <clears throat> it should have been better weeks ago. And the antibiotics have done everything they're going to do. Uh, I just do not think your leg is ever going to get better. So the cellulitis has caused a lot of tissue damage. You have weeping capillaries and probably some damaged veins. And uh, yeah, I just don't think it's going to get better. <clears throat> so I, I didn't believe my ears. So I quizzed him again. You mean my leg will never get better? He says, no, I don't think it ever will get better. This is how it'll be for the rest of your life. So needless to say, I was uh, pretty depressed and dejected. Uh, there's a lot of emotions that go along with something like this. Many of you will be very aware of it. Is uh, During those first six months, <clears throat> I had a lot of downs, very few ups because the darn thing just wouldn't heal. And it seems like every time that I got my hopes up, <clears throat> I was just disappointed. And uh, then I would be depressed for a few days and you know, I had a hard time working out of it. <clears throat> but when I went into the intensive care unit, that was a whole new ball game. I was kind of hanging on by my fingernails, <clears throat> you know, at the first six, six and a half months. But after that, oh boy, it just brought me to a, a new low. So I left the hospital feeling numb, uh, very disillusioned with the medical system. Uh, I was angry <clears throat> and I was afraid to hope for anything. I felt hopeless because every time I'd put my hope in something, it was just dashed into pieces and then it would devastate me. So I was very much in a emotional, mental, physical, and even spiritual crisis. Uh, and thank goodness for the iTerra Care product. <clears throat> product. Uh, it's put a smile back on my face and I have hope again. And it really was to me a miracle what it's done. So when I got home from the hospital, <clears throat> a dear friend of my wife, who is a dealer uh, with Itera Care, <clears throat> she knew of my of my journey and all my struggles with this leg, and she actually gifted us gifted one of these devices to us. So when I got home, there was a package on the door, and I didn't know about the product or what it did, and. Uh, my wife showed it to me after a couple of days 
and she showed me the promotional video on the website of how to use the device. And uh, here you see me kind of using it. So I told my wife, you know what, <clears throat> I'll try this, but I'm not going to be optimistic about it. I'm not getting my hopes up. Because like I said, every time I did, I was disappointed. So I put it on uh, number two speed. And this was the worst of my spots that um, abscess looking area. And I just held it right there for about 10 minutes and did this for two times a day. After three days, <clears throat> I was looking at my leg and I screamed out to my wife. She was in the other room. I said, honey, come here. You won't believe this. My leg is actually getting better. And I could see that the redness was leaving <clears throat> and the color was looking more normal. And that abscess looking area was starting to, uh, to dry up. So that gave me some, uh, some renewed hope. <clears throat> and I stayed with it for another three days. So after uh, five days, this is what I saw. <clears throat> Again, this was a couple of days before my doctor's visit, and I didn't start the prod product for a couple of days after his visit. But after five days, uh, you can see how the color looks so much better and the inflammation, swelling. So I knew at that point that it was, that it was working. And so, uh, I was so excited I text all my family. <clears throat> so here's a text that I that I sent to everybody. I'm hesitant to show you this yet because I don't want to get too optimistic this early. But here it goes. One week ago, the doctor told me that my bad leg would more than likely be permanent. I just got this new machine that blows warm air through some crystal tubes that has a wavelength wavelength frequency that heats your tissue down to the bone, improving blood circulation. I've used it two times a day. Look at one week of use has done. I am impressed. And uh, <clears throat> here's a couple of the texts that I got back. These are from my brothers. You know, and they had seen my wound the whole time. They knew what I was going through. Wow, Byron. Your leg looks so good. What a difference. Keep using that machine. Really seems to be working. And then my other brother, holy cow, what an impressive improvement. Why were you paying those doctors? I kind of kind of wonder that myself sometimes. Uh, one thing that I heard in the pr promotional materials, the video, is that often uh, people, as they first start to use the device, they'll have a healing crisis, they called it. And what they explained is sometimes uh, your area, your uh, problem area will feel worse for a little period <clears throat> before it starts to get better. And remember how, how much drugs and ant antibiotics I had been on for months and months and months. <clears throat> In my case, what it was doing was flushing the drugs out of my body. So when I would urinate, I could smell smell the uh, drugs, and it was even kind of coming out of my skin. So I started to, uh, to get a low-grade level of hives, a rash, almost all over my whole body. And uh, I knew that it was the drug residues. And so I just kind of reduced the time of my treatments, <clears throat> kind of tapered back for some days. But I've had those uh, low-grade hives, I'll call them, gosh, for four or five days. But it was worth it to me because I knew all those drugs needed to come out of my body. Okay, maybe a bonus round. <clears throat> this is something I really did not expect at all. <clears throat> so after I saw that my leg 
was starting to look better. In the promotional video again, it said that it helped with ED and prostate problems. And I've had a prostate problem probably for 10 years and I'd have to get up, you know, in the night and urinate and things like that. So I thought, you know what? What have I got to lose? Uh, I think I'll give this a try. <clears throat> so I kind of uh, did the blower in my prostate area for two days. I only did it for a few minutes, maybe three minutes per treatment. And gosh, within two days, suddenly I could feel kind of some rumblings down in there, I'll, I'll call it. Uh, I could tell something was happening. And um, and it was like uh, something had triggered on, turned on, and all of a sudden I was like 20 years younger and things were working great. So <laughs> that's something I didn't expect, but boy, I'm uh, very happy. And uh, you know, I've tried uh, dietary supplements for ED, <clears throat> and they've never seemed to really work very well. <clears throat> so this was amazing to me. Uh, the maintenance of this has been very easy for me. It doesn't seem like it takes very much to get things going or keep things going. So I'm only treating it about three minutes <clears throat> uh, every other day, and it seems to be sustaining it. Uh, really well. So I've been on this device about two weeks. I'm definitely still experimenting and, and learning uh, better ways to do it and how to use it and what it will do. And uh, I'm super happy. So my bottom line is <clears throat> my leg is <clears throat> definitely getting better. Every day the uh, inflammation, the swelling tends to go down a little bit more. And I've noticed a real burst of energy. Uh, this has let me get outside working again. I love to work outside in my garden and be an active person. So it's given me kind of that burst of energy <clears throat> that I used to have. And I guess maybe most important of all, it's put a smile back on my face. And uh, gosh, I feel like life is good again. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> that's my story. I think it's a good story. Definitely. Uh, it was so dramatic. Wow. Thank you, Byron. You know, uh, this is very emotional. You know, I can see it's an emotional subject for you. This is something you've been dealing with for eight months. And, uh, hey, the bonus round, uh, that's probably putting a smile on more people's faces <laughs> than yours. Yeah. Persons, yeah. people. <laughs> so, you know, it's a wonderful product. And, uh, you know, we are so thankful, Byron, that you took the time to come on and tell us your story and uh, in such detail, because, you know, a lot of people uh, looked at these pictures and of course there's doubt because it is such a dramatic change. And, I, you know, Krill mentioned that you could literally see it getting better as you were doing the treatments. It was just something that uh, blew you away. And literally, you know, no pun intended here with our blower, but you know, you um, didn't have any expectations about what it was going to do for you. And I love that. Uh, I, I was very doubtful, had no expectations. Yeah. That's partly what was so remarkable about it. Yes. So, uh, you know, and that, a lot of people think that, you know, well, this is a placebo effect. And I'm sorry, but, you know, even if it is, you know, praise God, because it worked. And everything, you know, your life is turned around now. And uh, it's amazing. So uh, we definitely uh, expect an update from you and some more pictures showing us uh, what has uh, transpired here. But already, I mean, the before and after from a week of use is just phenomenal. So uh, appreciate it. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, no. I'm just thankful that I found it. Definitely. A lot of people are. <laughs>